Hi, I'm Glenn Nelson, founder of HVP Solutions and NetLife Partner. I'll be touching on two major challenges in our industry and identify how we have created Band-Aid solutions for them. In addition, I will reveal how some of you have managed to overcome them. After onboarding training and working closely with many organizations from small to enterprise level, both in Australia and abroad, it's become crystal clear that on a global scale, we share the same industry challenges. It's how we go about solving our challenges that separates us from our competitors. Many believe they have identified their challenges and know how to cope with them. But too often I see people just rush into it and make fast decisions on what they think is the right way. Without looking for alternatives, we get industry tunnel vision. While others, we often see solutions as possible paths we can take to solve the challenge. But with this mindset, it already leads us away from why we have the challenge in the first place and leads us into a solution that is merely temporary, a band-aid solution. Doesn't it make sense to solve the root cause of the challenge rather than putting a band-aid on the outcome or byproduct of the challenge? By changing mindset, we are able to look at our challenges differently and identify the root cause. Have you ever seen that amusement park game where you need to hit the object with a hammer and then another pops up and then another two pop up from a different location and, and so on? Can you identify with that in your business operations when fixing problems? You fix one problem and then another two arise and, and so on. Well, why not reprogram the machine and reboot? We commonly react to the outcome of challenges rather than evaluating processes to find the root cause of the challenge. Let's get more specific now and dive into the first challenge of today, the photography department. It's easy to forget in our industry why we're doing what we're doing. We get caught up in the day-to-day -day running of the business, but ultimately we take images to sell in products. Isn't this the most important part of our business? Well, whose job was it to ensure that the images were saleable back in the day of film? Whose responsibility was it to ensure image quality, face expression, pose and technical quality of the photograph? That's right, the photographer. But what the hell happened to the photographer's job? With the onset of digital, we gave less responsibility to the photographers, creating a callous culture of quality and accountability as they know that someone would fix their mistakes and laziness. Is this how we value our photographers and photography department? We started employing non-photographers to scale the business since we thought we only needed someone with two legs and a finger. We believe that we could train non-photographers, pay them less, and still have the expected outcome with quality, process, accountability, and sales. Because with digital, we believe we could fix any issue that arose. We changed the role of the photographer and gave someone else the responsibility of image and data quality. When photographers don't do their job properly, it impacts the entire workflow and I'm sure we all know that outcome. How do you solve the challenge of one of the most important parts of your business? From my experience working with Australian companies as well as international companies, I've identified three main areas that need to be addressed when creating change in photographers and the photography department. Training, control and support. I call them the three pillars of photography success. Let's take a look at each one. When we start to train our photographers, we usually train the what and the how, but we rarely train the why. If we have more focus on why we are doing what we're doing, it gives meaning and context to what and how. 
knowing and understanding what happens before you and after you creates awareness of how photographer's job will affect the rest of the workflow. The power of purpose, the why, is also a great tool to encourage accountability. When did you last evaluate how you train and educate your photographers? And who did it? We all get blind to our own work. Is the photographer training designed for success and include the key elements, quality content, practice, repetition, and accountability? Is the photographer training in alignment to your company, schools, and parents' expectations? What photographer routines are you teaching and how do you know it's the most efficient? Some of our partners have solved this by engaging with external partners to evaluate and train their photographers. The second pillar, controlling photographers. It's one thing to train photographers in routines and hold them accountable. It's another to control what they do and how they do it out in the field. Photographers go rogue, changing camera settings either by mistake or on purpose. Together with strict photographer routines and controlling camera settings, we can save the photographers from themselves. How do you know that photographers are using the instructed camera settings out in the field? We work in a digital environment, so why not control your photographers digitally as well? If you could control all or any camera settings per job type, how much impact would this have on your workflow in terms of time and money, saving retakes and retouching costs? In this example, I have locked down these settings as an administrator so that the photographers while photographing tethered are unable to take the photograph if they are outside the specified values. These settings are made in the NetLife Cloud Admin. Here we can see that the photographer, when tethered, receives a settings error message immediately and must either change the camera settings or call the office to get an override code. This ensures that the technical quality of the images are as specified by the company, not the photographer. Customized overlays for both portraits and groups based on job types also help photographers to get the crop correct in camera so that no cropping is required at the retouch stage post shoot. Required tagged images ensure the correct amount of images are taken by the photographer and tagged for data purposes, for templates, exports, and composites. Photographers are tracked by name. They are responsible for image and data quality before they complete the job and upload. Photographers can also communicate to the office on a job level, subject level, or even image level ensure transparent communication between photographer and office included automating photographer reports. No paper communication necessary. Let's take a look at the third pillar, supporting and giving feedback to your photographers. We know that photography is more than controlling the technical aspects of the image. How do you support and give feedback to your photographers? especially the inexperienced or underperformers to capture the expressions that parents demand. I'm sure there wouldn't be any one of us here today that could say that they haven't had parents complain about their precious darling's non-smile, bad smile, weird look, stupid look, or doesn't look like him or her. What effect do substandard images have on your business? Wouldn't it make sense to get to the root cause of picture quality issues and solve them before they put sand in the cogs of the workflow, or even worse, get through to the school and parents. One of our partners in Australia wisely said, we have been working in a digital environment, although our processes are still from the analog days. Working in a complete digital way has its advantages with live streaming and communication. 
Do you have a photo coach in house? We have partners here in Australia who use the picture quality assurance features in the NetLife platform to view streaming images live in the head office while the photographers are out in the field. So why would we do this? Instant valuable feedback can be given live to the photographer to correct any issues right then and there. Issues such as poses, face expressions, crops, eyeglass reflection, backdrop issues, and the list goes on. I'm sure you're aware of them. Working this way supports photographers to learn and grow while eliminating image quality issues. Therefore, getting to the root of the problem, saving time, money, and resources. Do your photographers get feedback and support to learn and grow? How frequent? And how is this communicated? When feedback is given, is it only negative? We often interpret that no feedback is good feedback. What incentives do you have to keep the good photographers with you? They get to keep their job is quite a typical answer I've heard in the past. You mean the job that is highly stressful, constant pressure, seasonal, early mornings, low pay and no recognition? Hmm. What is the cost of training new photographers instead of retaining quality photographers? How do you look after your photographers? The outcomes of implementing change in the photography department can be seen in workflow efficiencies throughout your business. Increased image and data quality. Faster turnaround times. Reduced manual labor. Less returns, more sales. Recently, one of our partners got back to me and said that they had reduced their retakes by 95%. By changing the way your photography department worked, we know that it increases the quality of the images. Increasing image quality should be at the forefront of your business because it's never been so instrumental in your transition to change your sales strategy. Which leads us into the second challenge that I will address today, sales strategies. Roughly three years ago, I gave a presentation on the future of our industry here in Australia. As a part of that presentation, I said that online postpaid sales, that is parents viewing images and then purchasing, is knocking at your doorstep. Well, I think the air was pretty much sucked out of the room at that point. So where are we today? Well, we have small, medium, and enterprise level organizations in Australia using 100% online post-pay sales successfully. These early adopters started planning and implementing quite some time ago with the intention of disrupting the market. While many organizations say they have online sales, what they really are saying is that they have a way to prepay online. Prepay online sales is simply an old analog sales strategy brought into a digital world. Was it yet again another band-aid, a sales strategy band-aid? What has held us back? Some may say that the prepay sales strategy is a part of the tradition of school photography and that we shouldn't change it. The tradition is in the images and products that are purchased, not the sales strategy. As you know, with prepay sales strategy, parents pay money for a product that they have not seen and then wait weeks and sometimes months to receive it and even then can be disappointed by the quality of images. Prepay sales has been a de-risking strategy as there has been a fear to cover overheads and costs for sending photographers to the school and the fear of your images not being good enough to be sold if the parent sees them first. Some companies have moved to a hybrid sales strategy another band-aid, 
using both prepay and online postpay after sales with the thought to de-risk so you can change but not change. Although by introducing a prepay online first in combination with a postpay sales solution is the beginning of the end for prepay programs. Would you give money to a company on speculation that the images they will capture of your child would match the value spent if you also knew that after photo day you're able to view images and customize products and choose a delivery option? The de-risking should be to prepare financially because moving from prepaid to postpay will inherently change your business cash flow. Perhaps it's not the postpay sales strategy that people have feared or avoided in the past, rather the change in operation and workflow and mindset that is required to implement it successfully. Do it right from day one. Raise your hand if you have purchased something online. Let me ask you this. Would you have purchased that product if you didn't see the image of it? But this is exactly what the prepay sales strategy asks parents to do. Now some may say, it's worked in our industry for the past X years. Why would we change it? Well, it's called consumer conditioning. Consumer purchasing habits have changed to online and with rapid mobile growth. We know this, this is not rocket science. Although it's not only the purchasing habits that have changed, consumers' expectations when purchasing online has also changed. It's the evolution of consumer purchase behavior. Consumers' expectations are conditioned each time they make a purchase online of any product on, in any industry. And time and time again, the consumer views a product online and then purchases. What is the consumer's expectation when it comes to purchasing school photos then? Conditioning is then strengthened in your local market with industry early adopters that have already made the change to online post-pay sales. I'm afraid the vendors in this industry cannot control this evolution. We see a global trend where you will be forced to offer this by parents and schools. We even see this trend in traditional orientated markets such as US, UK and Germany. Changing to postpaid online sales where parents view the images and then purchase is not just a sales strategy change. I will say this again. Changing to online postpaid sales is not just a sales strategy change. It's a mindset, workflow and operational change for an organization to implement an online postpaid sales strategy successfully. We can change our mindset, workflow and operations without shifting to online postpay sales. Although we cannot change to online postpay sales without changing mindset, workflow and operations. I hear quite often, especially here in Australia, transforming to online postpay sales will be a complete disaster for my company because my sales will drop. It's a prediction that directly causes itself to become true. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy and it occurs when our own expectations influence our behavior. You know what? You might be right by believing that it will be a disaster. If you don't do it right and prepare in time. Although if you believe you can change, you already have the right motivation and mindset to succeed. But motivation and mindset are usually not enough. You also need knowledge, new skills, workflows and mentors to make the right actions. 
because it's all connected. Whether you are using prepay or postpay sales strategy, image quality is always important, as I mentioned earlier. We already know that parents expect quality images when they are captured by a professional photographer. And they certainly let customer support know about it, and indirectly, in the form of Facebook reviews. However, image quality has never been more important with the introduction of online postpaid sales, where parents view the images first and then purchase. Perhaps now you can see the relationship between the two challenges I'm speaking about today, photographers and online postpaid sales. We need to take these challenges seriously because our biggest threat and our common enemy is that evil mum with the smartphone. To face an enemy like this, we need to realize we have to change not only what we offer, but also how we offer it. We all know there are many benefits for the parent, schools and photo operators when you go postpay online. We also know it will streamline your workflow, bring efficiency in your operation and reduce human labor. We all know that by focusing on tailored one-to-one -one communication, the uptake and average spend will increase. Hopefully, you have a better understanding of why you need to change. And the question now is how to change. Because one day, you will be forced to. It's time we rip that band-aid off, plan and implement strategies to catch up to early adopters and leaders. You can, of course, leave it on hoping that evolution will not take its course. And by taking the band-aid off slowly, we know is extremely painful and only delays the inevitable. And comes with the risk of becoming a dinographer. Let's all give to inspire others to give because we all need to be inspired to change so we can be a part of tomorrow. Please reach out to me if you would like to continue discussing these challenges. And if you believe you are ready to change, I'm also happy to help you understand what it really takes to succeed with the transformation into an online postpaid sales operation.